So today I want to look at uh, testing the water for your axolotl tank, which is really important. You should do it very regularly, particularly um, when you think you're due for a water change or uh, shortly after doing a water change. It's really important because your axolotls, even though they're really easy to maintain, they're very, very fussy about their environment and they bec can become quite stressed and quite unwell very quickly if your tank water is not very good. So um, many people use the strips which are like little dipsticks that you put into the water and you just dip it into the water, but actually I don't find them very accurate. So what I use is I use a um, lab testing kit with chemicals, I use NT Labs, um, which is brilliant, it's about 23 to 25 quid on Amazon, depending, and it's lasted me so far about six months and it's still got a long way to go. Lots of, um, sorry, I'm, I'm hiding Fritz there. Yeah, he, he loves the camera. Uh, lots of really good tests in it. Um, test your uh, pH, your alkalinity, so that's kind of like your, the tank's buffer, um, how resistant it is to sudden pH changes. Your ammonia, which is really important about your waste products, your nitrites and your nitrates, and then of course your general hardness. So it's a really good kit. And as I say, for the money, it lasts you ages. So it comes with these test tubes here. What I tend to do when I get a new kit is I test the, my tap water first. Um, using tap condition won't change necessarily change your um, water other than get rid of the harsh chemicals that are used to make the water safe to drink. And remember people, tap water is death. So you must use a water conditioner for your tank. Um, you can see is uh, it's very interesting what's going to happen here now. Look, he thinks my finger's food. He has been fed, by the way. He's been fed some blood worms today, um, and I've just bought him some juicy earthworms as well, which he'll have over the next few few days. So I'm going to do a bit of a water test now. It comes with a syringe, which you use to um, get your tank water out. It's about five mils usually for each test and it's dead simple, dead straightforward. You just fill each of these tubes up and then using the instructions that it comes with, you do the corresponding amount of drops in the tubes. So here we go, I'm going to test it and then what I'm going to do is let you see some of the colour changes that are happening within the test tubes. Okay.
those are the tests done. Each sample takes different time lengths to um, to process. For example, the uh, nitrite only takes about two minutes, whereas the nitrate takes about ten minutes. Um, and these guys down here at the end, these these two particularly are all about the number of drops that you put in for them to change to a particular colour. And you can, by counting the drops, you understand the general hardness of the water. So for the nitrites, or so so should say the ammonia, using this guide here, the ammonia it should be a pale yellow, which it is, ever so pale. And you see that tick there that says that's okay. Anything darker than that, then you start to get into danger zone, and then ultimately death. Similarly for the nitrites, it should be clear, ideally. This has got a slight pink tinge to it, which is a little bit of a concern, but I'm okay for the moment, because what I'll probably do is do a bit of a water change for Fritz anyway. It's a bit of debris or dirt that's landing in the test tube there, but I'm not really worried. And again, if you test your tap water first, some tap water will have trace nitrites in, so you'll never get rid of the pinkness fully. Um, and the longer that you leave the test, the pinker it will get. But you, So you should really time this for two minutes. Um, because anything after two minutes is not, not relevant. Okay, so, but as you can see, the darker the pink, the closer to death. Then for the nitrates, again, ideally you want to... You want it to be clear. The ideal is clear. Again, slight pink hue, but I'm not too worried because the nitrates aren't really harmful to um, axolotls or to fish. What nitrates do in terms of the trace in the tank is if you have them, is they can affect the reproductive system. So if you're going to be breeding your axolotls, you really ideally should be aiming for this, this zero here. So nice and clear, but I'm not overly worried about that. And then for the pH, Ideally, that should be around about the yellow, which it is. I think I went a little bit crazy with the drops at one point, so it's slightly darker, but it's it's the right colour. It's not like the salmony orange colour here. It's the right colour. So it should be between the green and the yellow for a good pH or good acidity level. And then you've got your alkalinity. So this is, again, you don't measure this against the chart. What you do is you count the number of drops and ideally you should have around six drops in there of the fourth bottle to get it to the right colour and we have, which means that the tank is fairly adaptable, it's got a good buffer for pH changes. And then you've got your general hardness, again you count the drops, ideally you should have eight drops for it to turn this lovely royal blue um, and again we're okay with that. So the hardness of the water is okay. Not mission critical for those here, but anything that you can do to make your tank really kind of a nice place to be can only be the best thing for um, for your axolotl, particularly for it. I say these two guys here, your nitrites and your nitrates, the ones to look out for. Your nitrites particularly because they are toxic; they can cause significant death. I, the ideal world here is that you would want this to be completely colourless in your test. And many of those strips that you buy for your fish tank or your axolotl tank quite often give a false negative for nitrites. Yet if you were to do a test using the chemical kit with the same water and it has nitrites in it, you will pick this up in here, but not necessarily on the strip test. And again, around the ammonia, which is about waste product for from your axolotl, you need to be looking for that. Other things that you want to look out for with your tank when it comes to your water quality is axolotls gulping for air at the top of the tank or um, rolling around on their belly essentially and being and floating like, like balloons. You want to be really careful with that. Those are good indicators of tanks that aren't in very good condition. So if you were to look at Fritz here, he's actually quite happy, he's just sort of bobbing along in terms of the surface of the water. He's just playing in his favourite plant, which is an artificial plant by the way, 
and he likes that. He's just hiding away from the light a little bit. The light looks a lot brighter on camera than it actually is, but it does well to illuminate the tank, particularly if you want to be able to see what's going on at night in there. And of course, he's got his lovely cave there to hide, hide in if he really wants to hide from the light, so it's not much of a bother. The only real plant I've got in here is this one here on the edge and that just helps with some of the waste products in the tank but of course if your plant life gets out of control that's when your nitrates get a little bit crazy with your algae growth so you just need to be careful um, with that and let's see if we can bring him along to the glass hello come on don't be shy there he is he quite often likes to sit on this little light here as well and just perch on it and just see what's going on. Axolotls are really, really intelligent animals um, by their standard. They uh, are very curious about what goes on around them. They, rec they do recognise you, not necessarily a few distinguishing features, but if you're coming into the room, they do associate you with food. They see you and they think, great, I'm going to get fed. Dindins. So they will make a bit of a fuss when you come into the room. Come on then, hello. Yes, so Fritz's tank is really good at the minute. I'm happy with it. Water clarity is absolutely superb. Couldn't get anything better, couldn't ask for anything better for, than that really. Lovely and clear. It's a little bit of debris on the bottom but I'm not overly concerned about that. Again, regular tank cleaning should help with that. And then of course you've got the amazing high door pump system. Um, from Germany, which is so silent that sometimes you have to put your hand in it and check that it's actually running. It's just great because this is in my living room, this tank, and it doesn't cause us any bother whatsoever. Okay, so I hope you found that really useful in terms of testing the tank. And um, if you've got any questions or comments, then please do feel free to ask, and uh, hopefully, you'll become very adept at testing your tank water. Alright, thank you. Bye.